previously on balls. Absolute bollocks. And the dog's bollocks. When when Zane Moose's face appeared at my little window over there, I was the happiest man in the world. Zane has been this morning uh, involved, like a lot of uh, uh, very important people in South African football, in the uh, whole Bafana. What do we call Zane? What are we calling this thing where, where Bafana and, and the Springboks are going to play on the same day, August the 17th, in honour of uh, Mediba? They're going to be playing at the FMB Stadium. It, 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 what's the actual name of it? I think it's called the Mandela Sports Day. Yeah. It's going to be on the 17th of August. Actually, there's three games now. It's besides Bafana against um, Burkina Faso and uh, Amaboko Boko against uh, Argentina, the box against Argentina. Yeah. There's also going to be a Masters game. <laughs> ah. Yeah. It's ah. going to be uh, former players, Bafana players against Italy. Brilliant, mate. And they're featuring the likes of, uh, apparently, that's what they told us, uh, Roberto Beggio, uh, Betega, Paolo Rossi. Those oh. are some of the names that have been mentioned. Paolo Rossi, um, top scorer in 1982 World Cup. 82, yes, yes, Remember that? Yes, Remember yes, those yes. days? I think the Pope gave him a pair of shoes or something. Yes, and there's going to be a host of cultural activities as well, so oh. it's going to be a spectacular day. I didn't know about the Sorry, veteran. Sorry, 82. Video. Didn't they actually get through to the players without winning a game? Yeah, it was something like that. But they drew everything and, and got Spain, through. How could he be top scorer? Then Spain they drew everything 0-0, no, no, didn't they? <laughs> no, but in the World Cup itself, in the event itself, he was I'm talking about scorer. in the actual tournament. In the they tournament. Like draw all their games 0-0 yeah. or something. Yes. Yes. Through, yeah. In that tournament, England and Spain both went out unbeaten. That was the great Why irony. Are you surprised about that? <laughs> <laughs> they went out unbeaten. Italy went through without winning much. And then Rossi... And, and Rossi then came on and scored a hat trick in the yeah. semi and two in the final, and and the point being that to have Rossi and and, and all these people, Badger Especially and Badger, yeah. and the Springboks uh, against Argentina and Bafana playing at the same time, all on the same pitch on the same day, only in South Africa. Tell us what you really feel, Neil. No, it's the bollocks. I saw your tweets <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> oh, what about the about the box? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I have I have concerns about Arne Kamea. Yeah, of course I do. What he did to Sia Khaleesi last week was, I think, was wrong to drop him against him and not let him start. But, you know, that's, that's a political thing. I, I'm happy to get behind you know, a day called Nelson Mandela Sports Day on 17th of August. Zane has just been to the launch. Who else was there, Zane? Look, it was the who's who of South African sport, basically. I mean, the, 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 both the chairmen were there, uh, the presidents of the associations. Mm. Also, you know, Evan Koza was, uh, was present. My friend, Danny O'Dan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Neil Tovey, the former, uh, the captains of 95 and 96, we know the impact that Madiba had, you know, with the lifting the trophy with Francois brilliant, Pina brilliant. when he wore the number six jersey. So he was, uh, Francois Pina was there, he made a speech. Neil Tovey was there as well. And there were many other sports personalities. Brian Habana, you know, he, he was a big recipient. I don't know if it was a surprise, but he got, for his 50th test try, he received 50,000 rand today from cool. the Minister Figile Mbalula, Minister of Sport. And there was a lady as well, I think her name is Martha Cox. That's her? For 300 International in hockey, yeah. she got a brand new car, Fiat. So, yeah, they were also a big recipients today. Mate, I, I love it when all the sports come together. I've always, I mean, Darren, you and I go back, Zane, we all go back a long way. We've all, we all struggled w with apartheid. I, I always talk about this lad, Arthur, that came to play at my club when I was young, and there was all the trouble we used to have. And sport is a unifier. I remember the first time they let me go and play in Laudium, a cricket game in Laudium with Villagers Cricket Club, and we didn't know what we were supposed to have for lunch. And, <laughs> and South Africa's come so far since those days. And, and, and to me, sport was the unifier. And, and, and to do a day like this, yeah. to get them all out on the pitch together, it's got to be the way ahead, hasn't it? We, we've got to use it as a unifier. Which game is first? Because Gordon would said he'd like to have the Springboks play the curtain raiser. <laughs> 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 well, actually, the, uh, the Springboks are playing in international, so I, I, I presume they probably be last. Because, I mean, if you take into account the, the, the goals have to be changed, mm. you know, from uh, soccer post to rugby goals. So I suppose probably the two soccer games will start first and the box will be the, the main attraction. Yeah. I think so it'll be time zone as well because Argentina would be able to, the later the rugby game is, that would suit Argentina yes, better. Yes. So I think it would be more a case of TV scheduling. In which yeah, and, the and the game for Bafana is just a friendly yeah. against Burkina Faso. In fact, prior to that, Bafana will be playing Nigeria in a friendly in the Mandela Challenge on the 14th in Durban. But uh, all this is, it's a legacy, like you said, of... Uh, what Nelson Mandela actually wanted, he, if, and what he said about sport, it's a unifying factor, bringing, you know, the different races together. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. People who, you know, uh, rugby people will be supporting the soccer, soccer yeah. will be supporting rugby. So it will be all, you know, it will be to promote unity in the country as well. I, I guess it's just as well, Darren, that it's not um, Bafana Bafana against Argentina and, and, and the Springboks against Burkina Faso. I'm just that going to that <laughs> get a cricket match in there as well, bring Australia. I mean, that'll only take three hours. Yeah, definitely. I was speaking to <laughs> a... 20 game. Yeah, exactly. I was in speaking fact, to a... 
in fact, sorry, yeah. the, the ladies were complaining because they were actually feel they should be a part of it because it takes place during Women's Month. Yeah. But uh, the minister said that maybe next year. They didn't actually Get include Benyana, them this Benyana year. Get involved as well. Yeah. That's one, that's one yeah. ticket for all the games. Yes, so you buy a ticket and you watch both. It's at a cost of 250 if I'm not Fantastic. mistaken. 250 no. for the day. Which is cheaper than a normal rugby ticket for a exactly. test. Well, that, that's what's so funny. It's that brilliant. That, 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 <laughs> this is, I was having that debate with, with a lad uh, on Twitter that the rugby tickets are about 500 rand each, cheapest. Yeah. yeah, football, as we just heard from Mickey Modisani, you're going to get a 40 rand ticket. So they set this at 250 rand. So rugby fans are getting a discount to watch Bafana as well. And, and of course, your football fans hopefully will flood in their 90,000 of them uh, in honour of Mandela to, yes. to watch and you know, these legends. And all, the, and all the proceeds us. as well are yeah. going to, to some of uh, a certain percentage going to the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. So it's also for the good causes. You well. gotta, when, when something like this happens, you all run with it. You, you all pick it up. You forget your political problems and all that. As I was saying, last week i mean I if zuma came out now in a springbok show it would still be quite controversial and mandela spotted that that unifying element of, of sport very early went straight for it at a time when you know the springboks were persona non grata really in in, in post-election and he's carried it through and, and I, I i think whoever's behind this any idea who, who are the real movers and shakers behind this saying would you say well uh, it seems like it's the the ministry the sports and rec mm. they they the movers behind it i, I think it's more you know the, the local government of Gauteng. I've seen uh, Paul Mashatile is involved as well. Cool. So I think uh, in collaboration with the people from SAFA and the, and the Rugby Association as well. Well, I know Danny Yodam was there as well. And Comfort, uh, m much more stylish and great hair compared <laughs> to mine, is now going to try and get Danny. But I know Danny was there. Now, I spoke to Danny at length um, earlier in the week and he agreed to come on at 11.30. It's now 11.39, but I know he's been involved, hasn't he, today, Zane? You yes, saw him yes. there. If, we, if, if this phone just rings and he can't come on, I will understand. It ju just Danny's take on this would also be interesting, Zane, and also his take on... Uh, you, you just watched the Confederations Cup like I did, uh, Zane. Uh, when you see all that trouble they're having in Brazil, are you surprised that there wasn't trouble in South Africa before the World Cup? Uh, Tough question. Well, what, what, I, what I can say is I think the Braz obviously the Brazilian Brazilian people, they, they, they're more vocal. I mean, they, you can see how vocal they were. I think there were over 2.5 million or 3 million people who actually, you know, took part in the protest. Yeah, we, we seem to raise our voices, but we don't really put the action into place. I mean, when we're not, you know, uh, happy with some things. We did have a bit of it. But, it, you know, it wasn't full-blown. It wasn't as, as visible as in Brazil. But obviously you can also understand the concerns of those people because they feel that certain uh, of their needs, you know, like their health, their education, is, uh, is being underfunded, not being taken care of. And similarly to us, they feel that a lot of people feel that those stadiums are being built, huh. uh, you know, at the cost, at such exactly uh, the same as exorbitant costs. Yeah, and, uh, and somehow you, you can understand because for one month... Basically, they would say that the economy and the tourism industry would be boosted. But, you know, for one month's uh, pleasure or entertainment, I mean, it's like we'll be paying for the rest of our lives. Even the e tolls, we can see that probably that's also <laughs> a result of this. Absolutely. See, what interests me, Zane, because we can blend this in with the story that, we, that, that you've just told me, the 17th of August story, where South Africa is a country that loves its sport in the world, so right? Every, every time you see a good side, you say oh, it's like watching Brazil. It's become the, 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 the byword for football. In South Africa, we've got a World Cup. We're spending ridiculous amounts on stadiums. We're spending ridiculous amounts of, the, the, to get the cow train finished in time, the infrastructure, the airports, the opening the, 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 uh, the, the airport you know, down in Durban for, in, in time for it. And everyone was just, boom. Remember Santon that day? I was here as a Brit at the time. And there's all these people celebrating and shouting. And I'm thinking, blimey, a lot of money gone on this. <laughs> and, and FIFA, of course, took a lot of money out of the country without letting us see it. They had all these uh, signatories to, to this document where they could move foreign currency in and out of South Africa for the only time ever without any checks and balances. All that money you know, buggers off with Sepp Blatter to some Swiss bank account. No one complained. Everyone just wanted Bafanas to do well. They wanted South Africa to look good, have a great World Cup. In Brazil... They're doing the opposite. Mm. And I said to they Danny... They actually booed them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, they were booing the, 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 the president. They're booing Sepp Blatter loudly. They're outside all the stadiums. And this is only the Comfort Cup. There was no sign of that. Danny Yodan, we can't get Danny at the moment. He's obviously he's involved with all these, the, 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 the big guys at Santon now kind of debating and, and, and having interviews after the 17th of August announcement. But Danny said to me during the week, he thinks that the reason might be was that it, his World Cup involved not just football people, mm not just politicians, but also kind of civil leaders. He, got, he says that South Africa got people more involved 
in the build-up to the World Cup, that Brazil didn't go out of their way to make sure, for instance, that there was a subsidy from SAFA to cut the price of tickets. There was a special dispensation given by FIFA allowing your ordinary South African to pay cash instead of using a yes. visa card. Also, I, I think another thing that we must consider, it was the first time that it was held in Africa. So, you know, that euphoria that, you, you know, the fact that we were going to host it, people, I think, you know, took more into that and rather forget about the other politics. I mean, in Brazil, they used to, I mean, in, it's been held in South America and Europe. So this was the first time in Africa. So people were more accommodating. I mean, even if you look at the price of tickets, I mean, normally, even myself, I mean, just to take my kids to the game, just for the fact that to say I was at a World Cup game, yes. we were prepared to pay exorbitant prices. I mean, because it was a one sort thing. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why people were more accommodating and not, you know, revolting against certain things that were going to affect us probably until today like i said we're still paying for the for the for hosting the world we're Cup. still paying i mean uh, there was a story about the cape town stadium costing something like 300 million uh, a year just to, to maintain it the mbambela stadiums had this huge furore furore around it of course soccer city as well that's why they host a lot of other events so that they can uh, recoup some of the money i mean be otherwise it will just it, it won't be enough if if it's just for soccer so they've made it a multi purpose stadium and you can see where you know some of the con controversies come when that when the clubs have to use it when they say that the pitch has been damaged like uh, with uh, the recent uh, chiefs pirates derby yeah, no, I mean, you, you've got to allow, you know, your Bon Jovi and your Justin Bieber to go <laughs> on those shows. Otherwise, they're going to cost us millions. I, I think ultimately... So I didn't mention Bieber's name. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mention that <laughs> name. I, I just think, uh, looking at it, and, and I've been debating this with, with various people, you know, from your, your classic black Twitter lads, the, the Kaya Langer and all them, and uh, Kesa Kuali, all the way through to your more conservative people that, that, that are rugby fans, debating... I actually think that it, it's a real credit to South Africa that we didn't have a series of, of massive protests, that we were able to hold a peaceful World Cup with barely a bad story throughout the tournament. Uh, and and w this is why I was having to get Danny on today, because Danny was putting it to me that we should look at this and go, blimey, South Africa held a World Cup in 2010 that cost the nation an arm and a leg, a country that's developing, you know, Brazil similar nations, similar splits between the rich and the poor, not quite as racially divided, but there is a race, a race division there. And we came through it without a major protest, without a major scandal, without a major problem. And they now look, Brazil are now looking at a World Cup to come, an Olympics to come, with the possibility of quite serious protests. Yeah, we were fortunate in that it was quite incident free and we could, you know, we could portray a positive image to the world. I'm sure many of those people would love to come back because they've s they've been to South Africa, they've, you know, all the, the the benefits that they've seen that besides o obviously our problems that we have, but generally we have a good climate, we have a good culture of people, um, you know, good diversity of people of nations. So I think they would be encouraged to come back as well having seen the country on also the infrastructure and you know, seeing that South Africa is is probably as not as maybe not as developed as the other countries but having as much uh, good facilities and hotels and you know all these kinds of uh, the, uh, things that that can make you actually want to come back and live here no absolutely i mean the king sharker airport the cape town airport, w when you when you went round with with british guys spanish guys even guys from el salvador i got caught with on one flight we were doing that world cup and going to the brand new king sharker the cape town daddy says to me the airports in brazil are a nightmare he said a lot of the infrastructure, every flight, and this wasn't Danny, this was one of the other lads that was out there, every flight delayed, every airport an, a nightmare, uh, around the stadiums, nowhere near as well put together. And this is only the Confederations Cup. We've now got a World Cup to come in Brazil. And I, I do think that the one thing we can do now, near, near three years on from the World Cup, is pat a few people on the back and say, you know, South Africa did a great job. The infrastructure took a great boost from it. And, and, and maybe it's time to, uh, to revise history and say, we're doing better than Brazil. Yeah, no, we, uh, the people who, obviously the LOC and the people involved, they did, they did a brilliant job. Mm. I mean, you know, in terms of organization and, you know, all the, all the things that needed to be put in place was done, you know, almost to a T. But uh, Brazil, obviously, this was a trial run. I'm sure they'll improve as well. They learned from, from where, th that's what the Confed Cup is. That's why they have it a year prior. It's not as big as the World Cup, but at least it will, you know, it will help them uh, for the future, especially for the World Cup coming and, and the Olympics as well. I just, Zane, I just think, imagine if Brazil had lost that final 3-0 to Spain. <laughs> imagine the trouble. What was your prediction for that final, by the way, Zane? Uh, for me, I was actually sitting on the fence, Neil. I uh, uh, no, I like oh. no, I like both teams, that's why. So I wasn't like, 
it was like okay anybody it's fine I, I was just hoping for a good game but you can you could see already from the national anthem the way it was sung in the stadium i mean with the the emotion and the passion that not only the players the entire stadium it was just like you know they were they were they were really uh, hyped up and pumped up to win to win that game i got goosebumps i mean that, that, that hey comfort that mate that an anthem they've got isn't a pretty anthem like <laughs> ours right we've got Kozi Sikinena, one of the most beautiful <laughs> anthems you'll ever hear. Their anthem is a bit like a lot of thugs shouting <laughs> rude words at people. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to be But it was moving. It was but the way moving. they sang yes. it, I had goosebumps. They were chanting it out. They were absolutely... Bah, 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 bah. And, and the music stopped and they went on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I was almost, quite it was scared. almost like the haka. The, the, it the, became the a haka. Too, yeah. Absolutely right. And, and the other thing is they had the perfect start as well. I mean, the game just started and they... They scored. Fred. Right said Fred. Fred. Right said Fred. <laughs> ridiculous. It was ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> we used all those on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, You've so got to follow you. Zane underscore Moose on Twitter. <laughs> Comfort, give us your Twitter handle, please. Uh, it's at K Comfort K. K Comfort K. I've got to, I've got to find that and get on that. Sure. Obviously, you uh, can't forget that. We all K Comfort K. K Comfort K. Zane underscore Moose and Neil Call N E A L C O L on Twitter. Follow us. See what we're saying. See, see, it's not all about. It's not all about being deadly serious. Uh, last night I was ragging the Orlando Pirates fans. I'm sitting in a Pirates shirt yeah. today. You actually look good in faded, it. Huh? Yeah. Are you a Chiefs or Pirates, by the way? I'm an Amazulu. Yeah, I know you said that. Okay, I am definitely Zane and Amazulu. You're a Amazulu. Durban boy. And uh, those years I had in him largely Bush. Looks like things are looking up for them a bit since yeah, Greg Rosley has taken right. over. Ro Rosley's very hard to get hold of, though. I'm, I'm disappointed with that. I'd like to get him on next week, and, and, and I'd like to see Amazulu top five, top six next season. But we've got all these things happening at Vets. I mean, when you look at that, Darren, how long have I got? Uh, 30 seconds. Can we come back on after the music, or is it done? Uh, Oh. What's our butt like sundowns is this? Yeah, because that's buying everything that moves. That's what I wanted to get into with Zane. <laughs> I wanted to get into the, the, the incredible expenditure of Brian Joffe and Bidvest at Vits linked to the um, the incredible spending of Patrice Mutsepe at Sundowns, you yeah. being a Sundowns In fact, fan. I saw Sibu Sisu Zuma at the, at, the, at the launch as well mm. today. He's left Supersport. It uh, looks like Gavin Ahn doesn't mind the older players. He signed him Wari Wari. Now met you both. Who knows, Zuma could follow well, as well. If, if he's going to take Benjani, then... I yeah, mean, I remember, remember when Zuma scored that goal and he said, I don't care if he's 28, 38 or 48, yes, yes. Uh, he still scores In fact, goals. I was a bit surprised at Mori I mean, making the impact. Apparently, he's on 130,000 rand a month salary, plus mm. about 2 million signing on fee. Mm. And I mean, at the age of 35. And when he played for Chippa, he didn't really make that impact that I thought he would have. So, you know, you never know. Gavin told me he's got the best touch he's seen in South Africa for a long time, Ben Johnny. Yeah, but then he didn't the sign him at Supersport. Was that due to finances or...? Well, he told me word for word I didn't have the money to sign him. Because when he went to Chipper, I phoned Gavin and said, oh, didn't you have him on trial? What was he like? I thought Gavin would say he's yes. too old. Yes. Gavin said he's got the best touch I've seen, lovely touch. They've if also signed Musa Bilankulu. Yeah, look They've at this. They've signed a whole, a whole host of players. Matthew Booth. Matthew Booth. Will yeah. he, he's will giving he it one more season. Yeah. Obviously... Money talks. Money. I think that's he was probably going into retirement, but Wurtz must have given him a lucrative offer. So much we could talk about. Zane, obviously, the departure of the Kamitis brothers um, at, at Ajax was it was a real shock. I thought the Estif, the other ones, I can't. Yeah, in fact, uh, he used to go. play with uh, is it uh, at Wurtz, George. Yeah. George, yeah. yeah George he was Kamitis. a former Wurtzy, old that? boy. And now he was quite a good player as well, a striker. He used to look like George Michael in his days. Yeah. yeah so it's a bit sad <laughs> to see them leaving, but obviously they probably feel that enough is enough. They didn't want to ruin the club. That's what they told me. They, they said, we don't want to spoil the club. Darren's going to break up this wonderful... Zane's welcome back any time. He was driving <laughs> exactly. past Bob Thursday's 10 oh, to I'm 12. So <laughs> I'm so impressed with Zane Musa today. No one can quite believe how impressed I am. And I think that's our time up, is it? Thank you, uh, your new sound engineer. Comfort, you and me next week, mate. Yeah. We'll, we'll get through it and we, we will survive. And we're, without Darren, unbelievably. Darren, thank you for your help over the right. last three I'll weeks. And Maz, who's frantically sending pictures and, and tweets. tweets in the background, thank you as well. Uh, just before we wrap it up, uh, just to remind you, topodds.com, uh, that's where you can go. You can click on our website at balls.co.za. Uh, there under you can catch all the podcasts of uh, of Neil's interviews and stuff he's done today and going back as well. It takes us straight through to your blog spot. That's so right. Oh, and I'll be blogging tomorrow. I'll have, I'll have the Zane interview. I'll have a very nice picture of the mole. And um, we'll have some stuff. We'll yeah. get the Mark Fish interview out as well and the Mickey Modisani interview. Let's get behind Orlando Pirates in the Champions League and let's get behind the 17th of August, Nelson Mandela Sports Day, when we all get together and kind of unify a nation around sport. That's what we want. And also... Uh betting remember what lance michael told us uh, topoz.com you can go through our website just under neil's button you'll see the big topoz button click on that 
and it'll take you straight through to the Top Odds website. And uh, Alan Bookmaker is on there. So if you want to do your July betting through Top Odds, you can see what all the uh, bookmakers are quoting. But Alan Bookmaker, the first one in the column, their odds are up already. You can go click on that and then click on their website. Go and take your bets for the July. You can phone them if you want to discuss it as well. But just quote Balls Radio if you do. And they will give you even better odds than they quote on the website. So if something's quoted at 9 to 2, you'll probably get it at uh, 11 to 2. That's what he said. He says he'll maybe give it to you 4.5 to 1, you'll get it at 5.5 to and 1. And don't forget that Lawrence also played football with Zane Musa. There we go. He what about Zane. that? So what it, about all, that? it all comes together it with does. the castle. It all uh, comes together <laughs> with bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Your last minute, Neil. Great stuff. I, uh, just to say... The Durban July over the weekend needs to be looked at, needs to be concentrated on. Then into the to, into the Confed Cup, which starts on Saturday. Kosafa, not, Kosafa. No, the Kosafa Cup yes. starts on Saturday. Kosafa plays on the 13th. And not until the 13th to Probably we get involved. Probably the winner of the uh, Namibia, Equatorial Guinea group. Yeah, yes, Equatorial Guinea have been banned. As well, yeah. Equatorial Guinea oh, are they've going. they've been banned. Wow. They, they pulled okay. out. Uh, if you have a look on my blog, I've, I've, I've crossed out Look, I've crossed out all the... All the <laughs> So okay. it's Namibia, Mauritius or Seychelles yeah. for South Africa on the 13th. Probably should be Namibia, I think. I think so, which would be interesting. Yeah. And that's it. We're wrapping up. We're going to music. And Comfort is on his own on the flight deck. And he's about to fling us into some music and some vibe fly. fly. Thank you, Zay. Thanks, Thanks for coming man. in, Thanks mate. So this is Paul's Visual Radio.